Okay, so today I decided to take that drone test. Mostly just to test to see whether or not is that thing all about safety and does it target the drone flyer? Because you would assume, just from understanding it from the outside, that test is very basic. It's so when someone buys the drone off the shelf in a retail store, you're not gonna fly like within an airport or something like that. Or did they overcomplicate it so much where it just doesn't make sense and it discourages people just from, I guess, enjoying the hobby in general? So in conducting this test, I tried to do it as, I guess, authentic as possible in terms of how they present the test, what they offer you in terms of materials, which at the moment, if you were a regular person, you went to the site, take the exam or whatever, there was no study guides or anything like that. So I assume it's really basic laws reading what's on the actual transport Canada site and all that. So we'll see. I'll come back later with my thoughts. I recorded it before and I'll discuss, you know, what did I think about it overall? Did I pass? Did I fail? You guys will find out. Okay, let's try and take this test here. I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to record myself. I'm not going to record the actual test since they say you can't copy the text or anything like that. But as I go through it, I guess it's just to find out is this really about safety and drones or is it all about jargon that you don't necessarily need in a modern day life in terms of how people fly drones out of the box, which is what I assume this is targeting. And as many of you guys know, or for those who don't know, I've been flying a drone for over two years, virtually every single day, as long as the weather cooperated. And this is basically a targeting a person like me, I assume, a person that buys a drone from a retail shop and they want them to be updated with the laws. Because it says here, for example, for the basic small exam, it says, we strongly recommend that you attend a drone flight school before attempting the exam. Why? The exam covers a lot of new rules you may not know yet. So my assumption is from a person from the outside, this should be very basic to understand about the laws. And it should be fairly easy with a small basic exam, which features 35 multiple choice questions. You have 90 minutes to complete the exam. A score of 65% or higher is considered a pass. So we'll see. Let's see how straightforward this is or if there's like just a lot of jargon that you don't necessarily need. Let's take the exam. Okay, I want this in English. Sign in, register your key, GC, or sign in with an online banking partner. Okay. Okay. Welcome to the Transport Canada's drone management portal. See, as this is your first time here, we'll need some basic information, okay? Are you a Canadian citizen or permanent residence? It actually says specifically, foreign residents are not eligible to operate a drone in Canada. It's kind of interesting. Although it says if you are a foreign resident, you have to have an SFOC, a Special Flight Operations Certificate. So I guess technically you could fly as long as you have that. Street name type and direction. What? Who asked that for your address? Your street name, the type, and a direction. <laughs> I've actually never seen that before. They asked what direction you're in? What? How would I know? Did you just put like your address, isn't it? Okay. I wonder if that's a sign of things to come. So basically it's asking me here, what do I want to do? Do you want to register it, take the exam, or apply for the certificate for the advance? And obviously we want to take the exam to do the basic one. So hopefully it's straightforward. <laughs> to understand you need, or rather to get started, you need to understand like drone and aviation safety they're implying. And also this says you'll need something like a visa or a MasterCard or whatever. It's all about money, that's what a lot of people say. By clicking checkout, you consent to purchase from Transport Canada. Man, this sounds this so like commercial, it feels like. Choose your payment method. Okay, I love how that's like, the first thing you have to do here. Pay your money. Hope the reference number, okay. Well, it's all paid for. $10. Down the drain. Okay, so they're basically just telling you there's 35 multiple choice questions and you have 90 minutes to finish this at 65%. And as it says, 
It says, make sure I will not copy, transmit, distribute, share, record, or post any exam questions and or responses electronically, digitally, or by any other means to anyone. So I'm not going to say what the actual questions are. You're just going to kind of see my, I guess, reaction. And if I could just say in a general way, whether or not I think it's about safety or not, or about drones, I think that's the best I can do. Okay, let's start the exam. First one's actually about drones. This is a little complex in terms of a guy buying it out of the box for this question already, and this is only the second one. It's kind of funny how you, there's this one question you're asked where you're basically not allowed to do anyways as a basic flyer, so it's kind of weird why they're kind of asking you this. I don't know how else to explain it without being able to read the question. And one thing to keep in mind too is they did not give you a study guide or anything like that when you do this test. They just suggested you go to a quote drone school. This has nothing to do with a drone law in my opinion right now. What the heck is this? Hmm. Okay, at least one of this question I think it's 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 easy enough where it's a no-brainer like you should know like that's good for a question like that. Why the heck would I be asked this? I'm coming from a perspective too, when you have this stuff, it's... You're taking it out of the box, you're basically going for someone who potentially is going to fly it in their backyard or something like that. This has no relevance. What? This sounds literally like an airplane question. Like if you're flying a plane, not a drone. What? Why would I... Who? Why would you ever need to answer this as a drone flyer? It'll be like taking a car test and you're asked questions about a train. Literally. That, that's my comparison right now for this one. This is a complete guess for this one here. Actually, this question is kind of interesting with one of the points that I didn't actually talk about much, which is might be a little silly, actually, if you're flying the drone as a recreational flyer. How can you have a multiple choice question where, how do, you see, how do you explain it? They have two of the same points in one of the answers. How does that make sense in a technical sense? For example, it would be saying, what color are, what color is this object? Let's say it's an apple and they're trying to trick you. It's red, yellow, blue. Or if it's a mix of colors, it'll say red, red is one of the answers. I'm like, what? How does that make sense? Shouldn't it just be it's either red? How can it be red, red? Am I, am I training to be a meteorologist here? They give you like this crazy map with all this jargon here. It's like, what? Okay, finish. Submit or review answers. I'll just submit it. Processing. Unfortunately, you did not attain the minimum mark of 65% required for the basic exam. <laughs> I apparently didn't pass this, okay. It says I got 62%. So basically, in terms, it's mostly the questions that aren't necessarily related to flying the drones, basically, that I got incorrect. And again, I came at this with what they offered, no instructions or anything like that, from a drone flyer perspective as a regular person. How did this make me more safe? So basically, I did understand for the most part the rules and so forth for flying the drones, but it's mostly things, again, like the radio, telephony, and all that stuff. If I have no intent of going there, why do I necessarily need to know this stuff? So did I fail by one question technically then? I mean, just an example, like one of them says that I got wrong in a theory of flight, apparently something to do with the design of a wing? Review the aerofoil design and functions? What the heck does that have to do with me like flying the drone and so forth? As it turned out, I failed the test. So apparently I'm not qualified to fly a drone, despite my what? Probably 800 to 1000 hours of drone flight time and all that? According to that thing anyways, I can't fly a drone. Oh. Again, I tried to keep it as authentic as possible because keep in mind, I'm a person without an aviation background and at the same time, 
They didn't give you any guides. I mean, I could have realistically, if you think about it, I could have just cheated since they gave you so much time. I could have just Googled every single answer and get 100%. But again, my test was, is this thing genuinely about safety and does it help make a drone flyer safe per se? I'm just trying to think, what should I say about this? Because in general, overall, my summary would be, I don't see how this makes me a better drone flyer per se, like in terms of a safety sense. No, I absolutely not. It does not make me safer in terms of flying a drone, even if I was starting out. Because I said it in the beginning, when I started flying a drone, I actually looked for things like schools, but there literally were no schools around the area to my knowledge that were reasonable that actually taught you how to fly a drone. It was all just jargons about the airspace rules and stuff like that. Like you're just meant for a pilot. And even like in this test, it seems like most of the stuff that I was confused about were things like, for example, theory of flights. It seemed like it was more related to things with actual airplanes. I'm not flying an airplane. Why do I need to know stuff like that? It's kind of like the example I, be, I believe I mentioned during the, the video. It would be like taking a car driver's test and you're being asked things about a train. Why do I need to know how to like operate trains and stuff like that or whatever when I'm driving a car? Like same thing in this case. It did honestly feel like that test was taken from whatever test like a pilot would normally do. And they basically stripped it down to what some guy in a suit or whatever thought like, okay, let's just take some aspects of the drone and put it into this test as opposed to creating it from ground up from a person who actually buys a drone or again if the intent was to just understand the laws so a person who buys it in a retail doesn't just start flying it like anywhere they want like in the airports then this test in my opinion fails miserably at that i mean you should be actively trying to help the person just understand the basic laws and to be safe not to potentially confuse them with all the stuff that have no relevance to what they're doing. I mean, if it is weather questions, it should be more safety related. Like I remember in the car test, there's stuff, for example, you're driving in a car, there's ice, you're skidding in this direction, so how should you turn the wheel? That's the type of questions that should be there if you're focused more on safety and flying things like the drones. A little funny point about the drone laws stuff I was just reading from some people, I guess, Monday, October 21st, 2019 will be a big day, I guess, potentially for like people who fly drones and stuff like that. Why? Because apparently it's the federal election. So I guess that's the only way you can really get like a change if you don't agree with the way things are run, like in terms of the tests and stuff like that. There needs to be balance, there needs to be safety guidelines and all that. But again, this actual focus should truly be about safety, which in this case, I don't think it really is, honestly, just based on what I took anyways. So maybe I'll try it again afterwards once they have an actual guide to do the next test to see whether or not that actually adequately prepares people for what they want to ask you anyways. Because I think that's a little misleading too on the site where it says you should go to those quote drone schools because there's laws you don't understand necessarily. Whereas a lot of the questions, like the ones I didn't really understand, it has nothing to do about laws. They have to do about things like actual airplanes. Because one of the best examples, I think, to demonstrate this test doesn't really help to make a drone flyer safer, nor is it catered toward a drone flyer. One of the questions, they essentially give you what looks like a, a picture of a report that I would assume is what people submit. Like, let's say you want to fly in a controlled airspace. There was all this jargon and stuff like that. I guess this is the frequency that you contact and so forth. If you have an emergency, get permission. But as a regular drone flyer, why would you ever need that? Why would you ever do that in a basic situation? If you just want to fly it for fun, for example, you're not allowed to be in the controlled airspace anyways as an advanced operation. I mean, if you really want to test people, it should be more about things like if you want to use pictures and maps, here's a picture of that National Research Council of all the flight zones. Which one here is a, you know, whatever, class C, this and this. What does this mean? How do you tell which zone you can fly in and which one you cannot? Because as a drone flyer, I know one of the biggest things that's always confusing is a lot of people rely on these apps, like this one, like the DJI Go app. They rely on this one to actually tell you, hey, you can't fly here. So you should be trying to educate people on stuff like that if this is actually based on safety, to tell them, hey, you can't fly in this zone, this is how you read the map. And now for this test, I wanna make sure you know how to do that. And to be fair, again, I checked the site and so forth, there was no formal study guide or anything like that. So I did it as is on how it looks like 
It is intended at the moment because I have to come from the perspective of someone that just bought it from the store, maybe read the few rules on the site, and then did the tests. And as they say, it's mostly about laws, okay? I guess with things like drones, but that's not the case. For myself, and it's just my personal opinion, if it's truly all about safety, I think the focus should more be about developing ways to like say, counteract those drones. Like let's say if they flew into the airport, then have a way to deal with it. Or at the same time, if you're trying to get the average person to be responsible with it, invest your money into things like developing some kind of app that a person like me can use that I can detect things like maybe flights and all that where the planes are in real time so I know for sure hey I better not fly here for whatever reason I mean you need stuff like that in my opinion So I guess there's my test to see whether or not that test was authentically all about things like safety and to be able to fly a drone safer, which my conclusion is not really. And when I say drone flyers too, I'm just saying for someone like myself who bought it from a retail store and I fly it cinematically, really safe. I mean, there could be people that fly other things where this thing absolutely makes no sense at all. Maybe people who make their own RC planes, for example. So I'm just one opinion though. Alright, see you guys later.